Now it's time to do some job searching. Our last video set up companies and jobs using the Google Cloud Talent Solution Job Search API. Let's search against the API and see what comes up. There's a few things we should include in the request when searching for jobs. So let's cover those and then run some searches. For every search, we need to provide request metadata. This is an object that provides information about the user making the search request. It's important to provide these details to ensure a consistent user experience, as well as to better train the machine learning models. First three properties in the object are required. Domain should be the domain where the search is hosted from, such as foo.com. Session ID and user ID are values specific to the user doing the search and should properly be obfuscated before being provided, such as hashing them. That way, the API doesn't see any personally identifiable information, but it can tell when it's the same session and user. Device info is optional and consists of the ID and type of device, so you can distinguish between a web search and an app search, for example. Allow missing IDs is a Boolean that makes those first three fields optional. When the API is fully implemented, you should always aim to provide all of the requested information to ensure the best results. You can use allow missing IDs if you can't get all the information or if you're testing. For our sample code, we'll provide some static values for these. Technically, that's the only required field for doing a search, but then the request will come back with all sorts of jobs. More than likely, we'll want to actually search for something, so we'll include a job query. The job query can be pretty simple, with a query string for the actual search terms and different filters to help narrow down the jobs that get returned. For instance, you can return only jobs from a specific company or filter by employment types. We'll just stick to the query string for now, but there's more information about filters in the description below. You can also specify a job view property, which is an enum that declares how much information you want to get back with your job search request. Job view full gives you back all the information about each job result, but you might want to save some bytes and choose another option that returns less fields. Pick the option that makes the most sense for the platform you're working on. Since you may get a lot of results, the API will also paginate, so you can work with the pagination interface. We recommend keeping the page size to 20 or less to avoid latency issues, and always use pagination through the API rather than trying to load in all the results. You'll get a next page token in the response, so if there's more jobs, you can pass it into the next search query's page token. There's also a search mode option that lets you choose between a normal search and a featured job search. If you want to hear more about featured jobs, check out the previous video in this series that explains the difference and when you should use featured jobs. There's some other optional fields you can read about more in the documentation, but let's see some code and run a search. Here's a sample script that takes a search string and then runs a search query. We'll set up the API at the top, and then we call our function. Here's where we set that request metadata and grab the search query string. As I said before, the request metadata should include as much information as possible, but we'll still hash the user and session information to avoid any personally identifiable information. Here, we build the request object with our search term and our request metadata. We're also explicitly calling out that this is a normal job search instead of a featured job search and saying we want the full information for each job returned. We've also got a page size for 20 for now, though we'd have to use page tokens or an offset if we wanted to get to the next page. With that, we'll make the call with jobs.search and we'll pass in our object. Since we use job view full, we'll get a lot of details back, but the code is only going to look for two things, the title and the search text snippet. Each result will return the fields that your job view specifies, and that may be getting back a job object for each result, as well as the fields that are specific to the result, such as the snippet. Now, if we run the code and we search for engineer, we'll get some results in the matching jobs field. By default, these are ordered from relevance by the ML models. You can specify the order in the search request if you need to do some custom logic, but we recommend using the default relevance. This is a great starting point for getting data loaded into the system and performing some actual searches to see what kind of results you get. Looking at the raw search response, you'll see some important additional information. Total size and estimated total size can help you with pagination and matching jobs contain the actual search results. In the metadata section, you'll also get a request ID that's unique to this specific search. These are globally unique IDs generated for that specific request. So, if you're seeing an issue or have a question, these request IDs can be very helpful if you need to contact support.
From here, you should be able to load information into the Job Search API and start doing searches. In our next video, I'll talk more about the specifics of relevance and ranking for the job search results. Thanks for watching, and remember, when looking for talent, it's okay to keep your head in the cloud.